Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. One of the things that I like to do in each of my introductory astronomy classes is to begin the class with the astronomy picture of the day from the NASA website that is apod.nasa.gov apod. And today's picture for October the 13th of 2019, well, it is titled A Stellar Jewel Box Open Cluster NGC 290. So what do we see here? Well, this is an example of an open cluster of stars. Now, stars generally come in two main groupings. There are open clusters, such as this one, and there are globular clusters. The differences between them uh, have to do with a number of different things, including the types of stars that we see there. In an open cluster like this, we tend to see a lot more blue stars. As the globular cluster will have be dominated by red stars, and blue stars like these, bright blue stars would be very rare. And that has something to do with their ages as well. Open star clusters are relatively young, maybe millions or tens of millions or even a hundred million years old, but relatively young compared to the immense age of the globular clusters, which can be 8, 10, 12 billion years old. So they are much, much older and in fact date back and date back to the early history of the galaxy and to the universe itself. Now clusters such as these are important and and they are essentially a laboratory for being able to study the evolution of stars. Stars evolve on very long time scales, taking many billions of years in many cases to go through their lives. And how long that takes depends on the exact mass of the star, but even for the most massive stars, it would take many millions of years for it to go through its life. So it is not something that we can watch as it occurs. We cannot pick one star and watch it as it goes through all stages of its life. However, like we may want to study a human development in a semester, we can study stellar evolution as well. We can study human development by looking at stars uh, or looking at humans of all ages and then being able to interpret how they might progress, even though we would never watch one human from birth to death. Well, we can do the same thing with stars. We can look at stars at all different stages and then put piece together how they change over time. And these are good laboratories because all of the stars in a cluster formed at essentially the same time and from the same material. So we are eliminating a number of variables, things like, like the time and like the uh, composition, which would be essentially the same for all of these stars. And that allows us to focus on how stars evolve based on their mass. So that's the one difference. One thing we can't change is that stars would form of different masses. And those stars of different masses would go through their lives at different rates. The most massive stars going through their lives at the fastest rate and not lasting very long. And the least massive stars taking the, much, the longest time to get through their lives. Now, so those most massive stars might only take a couple million years to go through their lives. The least massive star may take trillions of years, meaning that when we see those very massive stars, it means that the cluster must have formed them in the recent past. Whereas when we see old stars or, or less massive stars, it's harder to tell. They could have been around from the beginning of the universe because there hasn't been enough time in the history of the universe for any of those low mass stars to have completed their whole life cycle. So here we see an example of one of those stellar laboratories in the open cluster NGC 290. So that was our picture of the day for October the 13th of 2019. It was titled A Stellar Jewel Box Open Cluster NGC 290. We'll be back again tomorrow for the next picture, previewed to be Andromeda before Photoshop. So we'll see what that is about tomorrow. And until then, have a great day, everyone, and I will see you in class.